One of the saints that made a real impact in my life is Saint Seraphim of Viritsa. This is not Saint Seraphim of Sarov. He is a different Russian saint whose holy relics are kept in Viritsa, a small village, kind of close to Saint Petersburg. I remember when I visited there in order to venerate the places where he lived and his holy relics, I remember the one thing that really stuck with me was that in the garden of the house where he lived there was this rock and um, for 1,000 nights he imitated the deeds, the wonderful deeds of Saint Seraphim of Sarov. He imitated the struggle of his protective saint. He did not go into the wild as Saint Seraphim of Sarov had done long before him. He did not spend 1,000 nights in the wilderness of the Russian forests facing wild beasts and um, the horrible cold of, of, of the forest. But he did what he could do in the given context of his life. He had a stone in the garden of his house and night after night, unknown to anyone else except God himself, he went outside and he prayed on that rock, imitating his holy protector and asking for God's mercy upon him and upon the world. Was it yesterday or the day before yesterday? I don't really remember. A wonderful lady whom I love very much from Canada has asked me this question. How is it that God gives me bits and pieces of wisdom, teaches me here and there what I'm supposed to be doing for my salvation and for the salvation of those around me, but I keep forgetting Am I guilty of this forgetfulness? Am I supposed to repent of it through confession? And how, before anything else, how am I supposed to fight it so that I don't lose anymore these gifts of God? And um, the truth is that all of us are being given these gifts. The question is not whether or not God is teaching us whether or not God loves us and whether he directs our life into the most minute, smallest of details. God loves all of us with the entirety of his divine love. That is not the question. And God is teaching all of us with the same care and attention, and again, attention to detail, that he had for his greatest saints. There's no difference between the love God had for Saint Nicholas, or Saint Seraphim of Sarov, or any of the great saints, and me, and you, whoever and wherever you are in the world. God's love is the same. God's care and attention to our life is the same, his attempts to teach us are the same, but the difference is that unlike the saints, we do not put God's advice into practice. Unlike the saints, we do not give those bits and pieces of of treasure, of wisdom given to us by Christ. We do not receive them in the sense of interiorizing them, making them our own, uh, appropriating them by using them. The reality is that we forget the gifts of God because we do not use them. What you do not practice, you will forget. What you do not put to use on a daily basis, you will forget. For example, <clears throat> Saint Seraphim of Viritsa, the fact that God gave him this thought of imitating his divine protector, Saint Seraphim of Sarov, who had prayed in the wild forests of Russia for 1,000 years. God gave him that thought, and Saint Seraphim of Veritsa, although he could not 
because of the context of his life. He could not just disappear into the forests and do exactly what Saint Seraphim of Saroth had done. Nevertheless, he put that thought, that teaching of Christ into practice, within the limits of his life, within the limits of his strength and of his given context. And although his ascetical feast is not as glorious as that of his protective saint, of Saint Seraphim of Sarov, both of them nevertheless have been glorified by God. And the proof is that they are both now saints and they both have relics to, to prove their holiness and their sanctity. If God gives you a gift, if God teaches your heart something, make certain that you don't forget it, because that is that pearl of great price. Forget all the other pearls in your life and prioritize this one. Prioritize the gift of God above everything else. Make use of it. Put, put it into practice. And if you use it on a daily basis, if you focus your attention on that piece of advice above everything else, then you cannot forget what you use. You cannot forget what you practice. It may at times feel as if God is giving you an advice that doesn't quite fit your needs. You may ask God's help to fight I don't know, lost, for example. And instead of, God, instead of that, God sends your way people and God sends your way dreams or thoughts you receive in your prayer or bits and pieces in the scripture or the writings of the Holy Fathers that touch your heart that have nothing to do with lost but have a lot to do with forgiving others and not judging others. Follow God's advice because God never wastes his advice. If it's not necessary, God would not give that advice to you. Forget about the things you think you should oppose. Forget about the fights, the battles you believe you should be involved into at this given moment. If God tells you that your focus should be not in that direction, but in that direction, then you'd better follow his advice, you'd better follow his lead. And what you will discover is that that seemingly unnecessary advice is precisely the tool you need to destroy the enemy you were battling. The same way that sometimes you don't fight lust openly, but you fight its roots, you burn its seeds, you unroot it by learning how not to judge others, how not to condemn others. And if God has given you that piece of advice, do not judge. If those words burn your brain, burn your being, or be more loving, be more forgiving, then make sure you, you surround yourself with reminders of that advice. Write it on pieces of paper and put it on your walls everywhere. Put it by your bedside so the first thing you see in the morning as you wake up is the icon of, of Christ and the Mother of God and that advice of God. And what you see before your eyes at all times you will not forget. And what you practice because you see you will not forget. And Christ, who always honors his word, Christ is the one who told us that if we are faithful in the little things he's given us, he will increasingly give us more and more. But if we treat with just carelessness and not respect the treasures he's giving us, the small talents, the small advices and pieces of wisdom he's given us, then he's not going to give us anything more. I'm in a tent. <laughs> um, 
I mean a tent at 55, 60 miles per hour because in my heart is the desert. Because in my heart I know what I crave to be. And I had, I've had this craving and this longing since day one. The first day when God set my heart on fire with my need to be alone with Him and to belong only to Him. He set my heart on fire with this craving to be in the desert with Him. I cannot be in a desert, but I can be in a tent, at least throughout land. Even if this tent is simply in the garden of the monastery, I am still out in the wind. I am still out in the cold. I am still out on the ground. It's not what my beloved Saint Cicerius the Great has done, but it is the little I can do. And I pray that God blesses this nothing of mine the way He's blessed what Saint Seraphim of Veritza did by imitating the great struggles of Saint Seraphim of Sorrow. When God speaks to your heart, my brother and my sister, make sure that you surround yourself with that advice. Put it before your eyes everywhere you are. Because what you have before your eyes at all times, you will practice. And what you practice, you will not forget. There's a battle against our minds. And the devil wants us to forget. Because to forget means to disobey, means to disrespect, means to dishonor God's love for us. And we should do everything in our power to receive these treasures that God has given us and keep us in our hearts by practicing them to the best of our ability. And if we are faithful in the little things that we receive, God will be true to His Word and will give us so much more. May God bless you, my brother and my sister. May God embrace you and bless you, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever your needs may be. Amen, my brother. Amen, my sister. Amen. Thou didst prove to be a citizen of the desert, an angel in the flesh, and a wonder-worker. O Sisaw is our God-bearing Father. By fasting, vigil, and prayer, Thou didst obtain heavenly gifts, and Thou healest the sick, and the souls of them that have recourse to Thee with faith. Glory to Him that has given Thee strength. Glory to Him that has crowned thee. Glory to him that worketh healings for all through thee. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. In thy struggles thou wast as an earthly angel, shining light upon the minds of all the faithful ceaselessly, 
with thy divine signs and for this cause. Righteous is so as we honor thee faithfully.